Yesterday, I was out with the mini drone club. We went to a very, very nice location. And before I went there, I decided to check for any updates uh, for the Mini 4 Pro. And I got an update and I updated everything. So I was pretty surprised to notice that there was an update available already this morning. But there seems to be a uh, bug introduced in uh, the version that was released that uh, kind of produces some very unfortunate things uh, when you're doing hyperlapse. It seems from the release notes that the majority of the stuff that has been fixed in this uh, new upgrade has been related to some transmission. And I know from uh, yeah, videos that I've been watching around the interweb that uh, DJI has been playing around by using or utilizing a new frequency uh, that is a uh, less uh, yeah, populated, which will make the drone less prone to uh, yeah, interruptions when they are flying in Wi-Fi polluted areas. I also know that uh, this upgrade was not made available for all regions uh, at the, the point where they decided to release it originally. So it kind of makes sense that uh, now they're rolling that thing out to uh, all of us and in that process they might have introduced some issues especially when i saw this uh, update from from uh, from this guy uh, travel information still no fix for the hyperlap issue on the mini 4 pro after today's upgrade and when you're watching the video that's playing up here you can see that it actually yeah cuts uh, the the live feed for the drone uh, yeah in between so that's uh, not a very fortunate behavior of the drone and it can be uh, really really scary but uh, DJI stepped in pretty rapidly here and saying hi there, sorry for the inconvenience caused. Our engineers has identified that this is an issue due to the Hyperlab principle. Please ensure to update the firmware of the Mini 4 Pro to 01006600 or higher version. This will effectively resolve the issue. And this is what we're going to test out today. As a side remark to this, uh, Billy Kyle, he also says that it drifts like crazy, which is something that I also noticed in the past, that uh, when you're doing hyperlapse, it's actually having a hard time uh, keeping the position. And we will test that, that principle as well when we are yeah, getting airborne. So let's get everything unpacked and up in the air. And I've gone here to my one of my favorite locations, uh, where people are kind of dumping their, <laughs> their waste. Because uh, when you're doing like a hyperlapse test, it's uh, always nice if there's some interactions or something's going on on the ground um, that will make the hyperlapse a lot more interesting. And if you don't know what a hyperlapse is, you will learn that shortly. But that's basically the drone taking a series of images and stitching those together to like a fast moving yeah, movie that uh, you can replay. But let's say that right now it's doing its thing and we want to connect a screen recorder here. And to make it a little bit easier to synchronize everything in post when I'm editing the video, I am adding another microphone here in the base. And I'm getting a lot of questions about that and it is just a cheap 15 US dollar USB microphone that goes in here. And then I can pull down the top curtain here and I can start the screen recording. Yeah, let's try it again. Yo, yeah, yeah, it's running. So you can see there's a counter in the base of uh, the remote that shows you that uh, it's running. Yeah, why do I keep getting those to <laughs> complete like a beginner tutorial? Okay. So now you're going up. Abi, abi, abi. So. so there's a golf course on this side, but this is not the place that we're going to use. We're going to use this scrapyard over here. This is such a nice thing to uh, yeah, play around with. Just record a little bit of video just to make sure that everything is like we want it to be. We're doing 4K30, underexposing it a little bit, just to make sure that we protect the highlights. So, let's just check. I have checked that, but just to show you that we're running the latest uh, yeah, 
uh, firmware here. We are running the aircraft firmware 0100600, 0100-0600, which DJI support suggested to install that one or a higher version to have the issues fixed. The app version is 113.8. So everything is uh, super nice. And uh, let's, let's just, uh, I had one of, uh, yeah, my uh, subscribers of my Danish Facebook group, he actually asked me uh, how to enable point of interest on his drone. The drone that he's using is the Mini 3 Pro and uh, this is the Mini 4 Pro. So there is really no difference in the way that you do that. So you basically just drag a square to enable point of interest on the screen here. And then we move the counter here and then you can just press the point of interest here in the corner. Like this. And then you can press go and then it will start to rotate around the object. It's a little bit different than uh, what, how they did it in the past, but um, I find it very, very easy way to, uh, yeah, to operate this feature. And I can just yeah, pull this slider to the other side if I wanted to change direction. This was just a little side thingy, just to yes, service one of my members from the Danish community. While I was airborne, I could still, uh, yeah, I could just do that. Before we do the hyperlapse thing, let's just start by taking a photo here of uh, yeah, the facility. Let's do an AEB where we take one that's overexposed, one that's underexposed and one that is neutral exposed. Make sure that we have JPEG plus RAW enabled in the base. So we take one of those. So now we made sure that both the video and the images are working. So we can head down to the hyperlapse section here on the menu here on the, yeah, the right basically have four options to do in hyperlapse. There's like the free form where we have to fly the drone manually ourselves. There's the circle, which is probably going to be the one that we're using because that makes most sense to test if the drone is actually drifting. There's the course lock where you fly from point A to point B, but keep the drone in a certain uh, yeah, angle towards the flying direction. So it keeps that all the time. Or there is a specific waypoint option where you can fly from point A, B, C, D and do the hyperlapse this way. But we are going to do the circle this time. So the first thing that we are being asked to do is to select the subject. And we are selecting the center of this building plot, or not building plot, but the scrapyard. I don't know if it's called a scrapyard actually. And now we have some options available here. We are going to yeah, decide what is the image interval that we are going to take. And uh, we are putting that at two seconds. So it will take an image for every two seconds. The total length of the clip, that will be five seconds. We are doing this with a speed of 0 0.5 meters per second. And we are doing counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, that is this way around. So that's nice compared to the yeah, where we are right now, that means that the drone will move towards uh, the takeoff position on the edge. So, if I just summarize this, you would see that it would take 4 minutes and 10 seconds to complete this operation. And it needs to take a total of 125 uh, images. Let's just fold that together. To put maximum stress on uh, the drone, doing this, we're going to do it in 4K. It doesn't seem that it has other options available. And we are enabling the raw option, so we are capturing the raw images. We are going to let the drone do the stitching, but if you want later on uh, to yeah, manually stitch this by a third-party software, you have the option as well, as the raw images will be saved on uh, the SD card of uh, the drone. So now we are basically ready to execute our hyperlapse mission. Our hyperlapse, uh, hyperlapse, it's not a hyperlapse, our hyperlapse circle mission. So see, now it's doing the first frame, second frame, third frame, and it will continue to do that until it reaches 125 frames. And then it will compile the video and then that one will be available uh, inside the photo library. And we need to pay attention if it loses connection at some point. You can see the drone is uh, 245 meters away. Um, let's just double check here with the gentleman here. He was only 45 meters away when this happened. So, so um, if this is uh, going to happen or if there's still an issue, we would definitely see it with this setup. 
And as you saw before, the tower where we did the point of interest that has a lot of uh, Wi-Fi antennas and uh, mobile cellular and all that stuff there. So there's a lot of interference here if, uh, yeah. So, so I guess this is uh, quite a, a good spot to uh, perform this uh, kind of uh, testing. So now it's a 35, 36. And I do want to excuse a little bit uh, that I haven't been posting that frequently here lately, but I have some really, really exciting stuff going on right now. We have entered into some uh, yeah, commercial work with um, one of the leading uh, DJI stores in, uh, in Denmark. And uh, I'm going to do some work for them uh, that they, they, yeah, basically will be published on uh, their website. And I'm helping them to do uh, sort of startup events where we are inviting people to come and join us. Uh, they can go and try drones before they actually decide to buy them. So there are some really, really nice opportunities uh, in this relationship where we mutually can benefit from uh, yeah, the strength and uh, yeah, weaknesses that both have. So um, I'm really looking forward to, to that collaboration and uh, they are really, really nice guys. And we have the first event on Saturday. And as far as I heard, there are 20 people that have signed up to come out and try uh, some of, of the stuff there. So that's an excellent uh, opportunity uh, to do that. And uh, multiple events are in the making that will be running all over the, uh, yeah, not all over, that will be running during the summer period. So um, if you are in Denmark, and uh, you have interest in knowing more about that, I'll make sure to leave some information uh, in, uh, yeah, in, uh, the, yeah, in the description for this video so you can yeah, go follow them and figure, uh, figure this out if this is something for you. You might not be into buying a Mini 4 Pro, you might already, already have one, but maybe you are having one of the earlier drones and you want to try the latest and greatest, the Mini 4 Pro. This is an excellent opportunity to do that. There will also be an Avata and an Avata 2, so there will also be a possibility to have some FPV fun if you have a certificate. <laughs> Which is, by the way, required if you're going to fly those here in Denmark. So, so we are doing 95 now and uh, there hasn't been any breakups. It seems everything is working like it's supposed to. And you know how that goes every time that I say that. Something usually starts to go wrong. <laughs> no. So. So a lot of interesting stuff is going on in my life right now and it seems um, that I will be able to, or I am able to support myself. Uh, yeah, I was kind of concerned for a very, very long time uh, if, if I could make uh, this uh, business run. But I found a way. I kind of realized that YouTube will not be my main income source. <laughs> So I kind of find a way, found a way yeah, to establish more income sources uh, so I can at least uh, pay my bills. So that is super nice. I keep smiling every time that I wake in the morning because it's actually so liberating not to work for somebody else. So now it's processing and it's doing all sorts of stuff and uh, we are in due time to a uh, low battery. So let's just, yeah, let it do that. Let's just let it come back. Come back! So now it's coming back so we can test that feature as well. You might be thinking, ah, did that battery, uh, didn't that run out a little bit fast? Yeah, it did. Uh, but I actually did, uh, yeah, one or more hyperlapse sessions before this one that ended up in the video and uh, without me realizing that <laughs> I was in the free form and I couldn't understand why the drone wasn't moving. But that was the reason. That was an Aero 40. The guy, like 40 centimeters from, uh, <laughs> from um, yeah, the remote. Let's go grab the thing and let it land. So, yep. So as far as I can see, everything is working like it's supposed to. So um, I would highly recommend that you go and update for the latest uh, yeah, firmware. Yeah. The only thing that doesn't work is that the background is super bright. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was not so ideal. <laughs> okay, but that's how it's going to be. So let's just go and uh, check the hyperlapse video here just to see if that one is, uh, is actually on the card here. Of course it is. At least that would be a super bummer if it's not. 
so yeah the five second hyperlapse that's here so see you know we play it da 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 cars are going back and forward and this is exactly what i mean if you're doing hyperlapse make sure that there are motion in the image because otherwise it'd be dead boring to look at <laughs> <laughs> That's all the students that are that, that are leaving school. They are they have a tradition here in Denmark that they are riding around on uh, yeah uh, trucks on the back of uh, big trucks and then they are uh, yeah drinking their brains out, playing a lot of loud music, and then they're driving from one parent's place to the next parent's place. I guess you gotta have been here as part of of this tradition to understand that this is why this is even allowed. <laughs> <laughs> but they are having a good time and I guess they are puking a lot. <laughs> All right, so that was a, a test of uh, the DJI flap, sorry, flap, the flap. By the way, this video has been recorded with my latest purchase, uh, the Osmo Action 4 and the DJI Mic 2. And I really, really love this kit because that kind of makes me, yeah, be able to camera I can go here to the other side and I can keep talking explaining I can do like <laughs> it gives a lot of freedom and uh, I really like this combination even though I like my GoPro 12 a lot too I like this seamless integration between the DJI Mic 2 and the Osmo Action 4 let me know if you want to know more about this uh, combo uh, in the comments below so this concluded my test flight with the, the DJI Flyer 113.8 and the new firmware that is recommended by DJI support was 01000600 uh, that should yeah, supposedly fix the issues uh, that was introduced with Hyperlapse. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you on the next one.